Oh, I didn't go to my channel yet. I guess I should go to my channel. Here we go. It says I'm going live right now. How is everyone today? And I see the chat. I don't know. Okay. Sometimes it actually works, and I'm always shocked when it does. So let's talk about Etsy, but oh my God, there's so much to talk about this week, and I've got, I, I have to come in here and set this up. So let me set this up, and then we'll get going, but I actually have a list. I went and made a list of things that we need to discuss, and then I have some, I have some complaints I have some complaints and I'm going to feel free to share them and I'm not even touching that. Some of these settings, I don't know what they do because they're new and I don't want to find out. Okay. Let me see. Let me turn this one on. Oh no, I don't want to do that. Wait there, there. That's weird. It reset itself. Let's do this again. And save that. Okay, now it says it saved it. Let's go back over here. How is everyone today? I see Bill is here, and Bill is our moderator, and uh, you must obey him. His screen name is Holidays Lane, and if you'd like to go over to his shop, he sells beaded hand-done ornaments that are very nice, much nicer than the ones that I made using the kits that he has. Although you too could try a kit and make a crooked ornament, or you can get a, one that's like, done correctly they, they all look nice regardless because they're they're fancy and they're shiny and it's a shiny thing so go get yourself a kit anyway all right so wow there's a lot going on on etsy this week uh and yeah okay should i get my complaint out of the way before we get started because I am on my last nerve waiting for Etsy to drop this fee increase or tiered pricing plan or whatever it is. I don't know. They just need to do it and get it over with. And I can see them leading up to it. I can see them doing all these. Little, they're kind of, we're dripping out some new improvements. We're giving you tools to help your business. And that's what they do before they hit us with a fee increase. Cause then they can say, Oh, but look, we put all this other stuff in place. And now you can, you, you know, you're paying for a little bit more, but you're getting so much more from us. Okay. That's fine. I just, I want them to just get it over with because I want instant gratification and I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of waiting for it to happen. That's just, that's my complaint. That's my complaint for the day. Everything else is just going to be reporting. Oh, and I, you know what? I have not, I have not gone over to look at the questions. So there might be some interesting questions that I have not seen yet. Let me see my channel. But, and if you are a channel member, you get to ask questions first, and then we will be answering um, questions from the chat. So there's only three questions. So that's good. I'm leaving it there. So don't run over and ask your question now, because I'm not going to see it. And yeah, no, I don't like anticipation. It's making me wait. It's keeping me way a a a a ting. Okay, all right. Yeah, Jan, try to slide that one in. I got I got that one right right on there. Okay. Anyway, let's go over the things that we are are sure about that's going on with Etsy, as opposed to the things that we are way a a a ting for. Um, and does that make anyone else think of ketchup? How old am I? Okay. I hear that song. I think of the commercial for, was it, is it Heinz ketchup? What brand was it where they're like waiting for the ketchup to come out and that's the anticipation? Uh, no. Okay. Anyway, first thing, this is actually something that they added that might, that might be helpful. This could be helpful. It's a profit calculator. However, <laughs> you have to use it the right way. You have to use it the right way. Okay. The profit calculator, it's it's not in both of my shops so far. They made they put something in the announcement section of the Etsy forums about it. It's Heinz. Okay. Um, yeah, you see, you guys know you're old like I am. Okay. Let's let's all let's all gather around and be old together and think of ketchup when we hear that song. Um, okay, and anyway. Profit calculator. Um, they there is a link in the announcement section that goes to the blog article about this. There's something in the dashboard. I think there was something in one of the dashboard. 
I have two Etsy shops open now. Oh, that's I closed one of my Etsy shops. And I said I was going to do that last week. I did it. My vintage shop is now permanent vacation. I just put it on permanent vacation in case I need to open it up to experiment with something. Because I realized that that's actually what I use that shop for is experimentation. So I'm like, well, okay, I'll leave it open. There aren't any listings in it. But, you know, anyway, um, profit calculator did not show up in my main shop yet, but it did show up in my digital shop. And basically it's when you're doing the listing, you put in the price and you put in your expenses, okay? And then it tells you your profit and it'll take all the fees into account. Now, I don't think that it's taking things like offsite ads into account because it in my digital shop, I have everything price set for my keyword list at $8.25 because based on all of my Etsy fees, that would bring my profit on each one to $7, okay? And I put, you know, I didn't put any expenses in and it said the profit was $7.02. So all it's taking into account is your actual Etsy fees, like the basic listing fee, basic transaction fee. But I don't think it will take... It, it, you have to add more fees into it, okay? Because if you get a lot of offsite ad sales, you have to take that into account when you're doing your pricing. Um, so th there's, there's things that you need to be aware of. And you also have to go in and actually do the correct calculations for your expenses because your expenses are not just the cost of the materials to make the product. And they, they do have actually a good spreadsheet that is linked. And again, it's in the, the, in the announcements and the Etsy forums. There is an article about this in the announcement section. You can just go ahead and, and check all these things out. But it's, it's really just kind of a way to get an idea about what your actual expenses are. And when you're doing, when you're doing your expenses, okay, and like Wendy says, she doesn't see shipping. If you roll your price into shipping, if that's, like if, if your price includes shipping, if you do free shipping and your price of the product includes the shipping price, which it should, if you do free shipping, then that has to be part of your expenses also. So you have to go through and take everything out. In, if, for example, do you have insurance? Do you have fees that you pay for a business license? Do you pay for, I'm trying to think of other things. Do you, do you have, do you pay for gas to go to the post office? You know, basically anything that you take as an expense on your taxes has to be accounted for in the cost of your items. And that includes things like overhead, which a lot of people don't think of when you're pricing out your stuff. So anyway, go through that sheet, go through the spreadsheet, actually look at all that stuff and you have to figure out, but I did look at the spreadsheet and it's nice in a way because you put in the price. So let's say I pay, I think total, my total insurance for the year, I think is around 600, 650 for my cake business. So I would put that in as an expense and then it figures it out for you like per item, but you have to put in an average number of items that you sell. So again, that's a little tricky. You have to, there's, it's, it's more complicated than just putting in a price and your expenses and you get the profit back. Remember, it's not taking offsite fees into account. Um, it, you know, you have to make sure you're putting your expenses in correctly, but it'll give you a better idea than just saying, hey, I think I'm making X amount. OK, so that's that could be useful, but it will take a little work on your part. And math is involved. There will be math. OK, there will be math involved. All right. Starting on March 26th, which is next Tuesday, you're going to need to be logged in to see Etsy forum posts. And they announced this back in I don't even know when it was a few months ago. So they're just changing that. So you can't just go and be a casual observer of the forums. I thought they had made this change already, but I guess they announced that you're going to have to actually be logged into your Etsy account to be able to see the forums, which is good because then if scammers are in there trying to find information, you know, they won't be able to unless they actually have an Etsy account and Etsy can trace that back. You know, they'll, they'll have to send messages from that account and then they'll have to be able to, you know, anyway, it's, it's also for privacy and that kind of stuff. You need to be logged in to be in the forums. All right. Some of the things that, oh, you know what? I do have another complaint. I have a complaint that Etsy seems to be attracting. Um, I'm trying to think of a nice way to put this. And I don't know that I'll be able to find one. Etsy seems to be attracting customers to the platform 
who are a little more demanding than usual. That's how I'm going to phrase this. They're a little more demanding and they might not know how to read a description. And I don't know if you guys are having the same experience, but I'm getting a lot of like three-star reviews. I got a, a couple one-star reviews because people said, this doesn't seem to be edible. And I'm like, it, it is. Okay. I mean, but it, they're giving me weird reviews, like strange, strange reasons. Someone left a review recently. Um, it, it's all about the size. You know, like this is smaller than I thought. This is larger than I thought. And I'm like, did you see the picture of it next to the ruler? Did you make an effort to read the description? Because it says the size in there. It's that kind of thing. And I think that it's because Etsy is putting out all these ads, trying to get people to come to the platform. But now we're getting the Amazon crowd, okay? We're getting the people from the, you know, the get it fast and get it quick and get it cheap. And it, it it's it's a weird thing. Okay, so anyway, and Bill says, it's cute, but not what I was looking for. Okay, so then why'd you order it? Yes, I think I might have actually gotten a couple comments like that. I don't know. Um, it, but I, I, that's my other complaint about Etsy right now. Number one, I wish that they would just drop whatever fee increase they're going to do on us, get it over with, let us look at it because I am dying. I want to know what's going to happen. And this weird kind of weird wave of weird customer complaints. And it, it's just strange. It just, it, you know, anyway. Okay. So those are my two, those are my two complaints, but let's keep on with the things that people have noticed are happening on Etsy right now. Um, people have said that they went into their listings and all the tags were on. So you might want to take a look. Another thing, videos have been added that weren't yours. So you go into your listing and there's a video in the listing that is of someone else's product. And I think that this was happening a while back. So this might have been left over from back then and she just didn't notice it. Okay. But yeah, the, the listings are getting mixed up. We'll just put it that way. Um, Weird things are selling. I think I mentioned this before. I think I mentioned this last week that they they are they're seemingly showing things in search that have not sold for a long time. Or they're, like I'm getting orders for things. And I was like, do I still sell that? Because it's just been sitting there for so long, and all of a sudden people are buying it. It's really weird, and I don't know why. I think it's they they definitely did something to search over the past two weeks and they're, they're continuing to do it. They're tweaking things. They, they tend to tweak things on the weekends and they go away and they come back on Monday and say, okay, what happened? And then they have like a few days of data. Um, but the weird sales patterns, people are seeing like random spikes and dips in sales, just weird things selling. It's very strange. This is just strange. It's a, like, you know, I, I don't know. Um, someone asked in the Facebook group if people are seeing more localization because their sales patterns, again, just changed like on a dime. All of a sudden, either everything was international or everything was not international. I can't remember, but it's like some, some weird thing with localization. Uh, so they're, they're doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. I've been looking at search results to see what they're like, you, you, you never know hundred percent what they're doing. Um, but they made they made some comments in some recent investor presentations about you know elevating the best listings, elevating the listing quality. And I'm also going to do a podcast. I might do it right after this about SpaghettiO juice information because someone in the Facebook group said, "What is that?" And I realized that not everyone in the Facebook group found me through YouTube. They either were suggested by Facebook or whatever. Um, no, don't know what SpaghettiO juice information is. If you are a channel member go ahead and spam that spaghetti -o juice emoji right now and show everybody that it's actually a thing on this channel because it is, it's spaghetti -o juice. And I'm going to do a podcast explaining it, but I've seen some weird spaghetti -o juice information from um, uh, people who shouldn't be spreading it in the Etsy forums. It's very weird, but you know, um, and thank you, basically, thank you, Kathy. Basically, Botanicals and Kathy and Bill are all showing the, and Emily, there's the SpaghettiO juice emoji. It's such a sexy emoji. And if you're a channel member, you too can have that SpaghettiO juice emoji. But I will do a podcast right after this to explain what that is. But I've seen a lot of SpaghettiO juice information in the forums recently. 
not, you know, not um, saying that that doesn't happen in the Etsy forums all the time, but this is coming from people who should know better. And you, you know how it is with every forum. And I'll, I, I'll, I'll say, I'll talk about that in the podcast. That'll go up on Thursday. Um, but yeah, there's some weird stuff going on in the forums. Um, <laughs> like I said, not that that's not a, a constant. Um, what else? Okay, so it, it basically weird traffic patterns, weird sales patterns on Etsy in general. And the other thing is that they're going to have expiration dates or they have started expiration dates for the thank you abandoned cart coupons that you set up to send out through them. So people can't use them a year from now, but it's still a pretty long time. Is it a hundred days? Is it two months? I don't know. It's, it's long enough that when I saw a dead, a deadline of, you know, two months, I was like, that's, that's still a really long time. So, but anyway, those, those coupons are now going to expire eventually. All right. Eventually they will expire. Okay. And now since I just have all the channel members, I don't know if anybody on here is not, I see this. There are some people who are not members and I think that I can give out, I have five memberships left to give this month. So I'm going to give five memberships randomly by pressing a button. So please don't say, give it to me, give it to me because I don't choose YouTube chooses. So I'm going to give five free memberships to the channel and let's see, Aggie, Tiff, AJ, Retro Vintage Monkey. That's the best name. I love that. Um, texture, oh wait, no, AJ is already a member. Okay. Tattered Time Dragonfly Dreams and is it, Ken, wait, Kennel's Creations. I'm My eyes are shot. So you guys got membership. So now you too can post a spaghetti -o juice emoji. What a treat. Um, Okay. Anyway, so that's what I've seen going on. And that's what other people have seen going on in the, um, in, in Etsy. Just, I mean, it's just nuts. It's weird stuff. They keep adding things. They, and another survey went out, which I did not receive, but I saw part of it. And it's, it's basically, I think it was mostly a decoy. You know how they'll send things out that, are just meant to kind of distract you from the main thing that they're looking at. Most of this survey was a decoy, but there was one thing in it. And I'm trying to remember what it was. There was, there was one thing that I think it was trying to, to look at and I can't even remember what, Oh, I know what it was. It was like the, the sh Oh, that's something else that they're doing It's the shipping dates. Like when do you ship during the week? There were some questions about that. And I think that's what they're looking at. Um, Etsy has said, Josh has said during investor presentations that their goal for this year is to reduce shipping time by two days. Okay. So that's why they're harassing us to send things out faster. So on one hand, they're going, we're never going to be Amazon with one day delivery. We're never going to be fast shipping. Well, that's BS because then they turn around and say, ship everything, every, you know, so you need to watch out because they are going to be changing everyone's shipping dates as far as I can see, because people are getting this on their dashboards. They're going to be getting um, your shipping dates changed to include Saturday and Sunday if you do print labels on those days normally. You can go in to your shipping settings and you can change it back. You can take that out. Okay. But just keep an eye on that because Etsy is doing this without, you know, they'll, they'll put it on your dashboard, but then they're going to do it for you. We're doing, we're going to do it for you to help you out to be more accurate. Okay. That's what they're trying. Their goal is to reduce shipping dates by two days. And that's how they're doing it. Okay. It, it's irritating because again, people see that low estimate on the date and the way that they figured that out, um, they, they calculate that by the shortest shipping time you have available, whether the customer buys that or not, the shortest shipping time you have available, plus the shortest processing time on your range of processing dates. So if I have one to three days processing and I have Priority Express as an option, they take one day processing plus one day delivery and they say, you're going to get this in two days if you order it. Well, that's BS because then they go over to, you know, shipping and they choose regular ground shipping, which takes five days. And then they're mad because the estimate there is different than the estimate that Etsy gave because now we're dealing with reality, which is the post office, and they get mad and write to you. Okay. So, but that's, that's why, that's why. 
So it's, it's all trying to get people to buy stuff because they think you're going to get it faster. And it's, you know, and I, the same thing happens on Amazon, you know, I bought something on Amazon recently and it's like, you're going to get this on Tuesday. And then Tuesday came and they're like, oops, it's tomorrow. And so it didn't get to me when it said it was going to. And I think people are used to that now, but just be prepared for a lot of people complaining that the times that they were shown before they purchased are not the times that they saw after they bought the thing. And it's based on the postage that they are choosing. So you can tell them that. Okay. Um, let's go over to the community tab and see there's three questions. And then after that, we can take questions from the chat. Okay. First question, I've been considering adding a select few POD items to my crochet pattern shop on Etsy. These would be very complimentary to crochet addicts. Okay. But I haven't done it because I'm worried that Etsy's manic bots, why, might randomly delist um, de one of the POD items and it will affect my shop standing. Or worse, my shop gets shut randomly because of something I didn't know I've done. I would buy each item first and take my own photos, no mock-ups. Um, I've been selling on Etsy since 2012 and never had a single problem. And, and you know what? I don't, this is this is kind of the, the feeling today, isn't it? That you don't know what's going to happen. Um, I, I would say that it's, you're probably fine adding some POD items to your crochet shop, but you need to make sure that you're not violating copyrights or trademarks. And anytime you're doing anything with words in it these days, you might be because people are trademarking everything and they're copywriting everything and they're filing false copyright claims. I would just be really careful with any of that because you don't know. I wouldn't, I don't think I would do anything with words on it these days because there's so much BS that happens with the trademark office, you know, letting people apply for this stuff. It's insane. Um, uh, but it's not going to hurt your shop. And, you know, I mean, if, if Etsy delists one thing, then you can just take everything out if you're paranoid about it. I understand the feeling of everybody's kind of walking on eggshells because you hear all these stories. I was shut down for no reason. Well, usually there is a reason. You, and sometimes they do shut your shop down for no reason and it's an accident. And then they're like, oh, sorry. And they reopen it. Or they don't even say they're sorry. They just reopen it. But for the most part, if people are getting shut down, it's because they did something wrong. And if you're not doing anything wrong, 99.9% .9 of the time, everything is going to be okay. I would still have different platforms that you sell on. You know, I would have either a website or just sell somewhere else where you can do downloads. Uh, I would not have, regardless of whether it's Etsy or any other platform, I would not sell only in one place because it's just not safe. It's not safe for your business in general. And it's not safe to be on a platform that you do not control and have that be the only place that you sell. It's just not. So, yeah. Oh, and that reminds me that if you are in my monthly membership to get traffic to website, blog, YouTube, Etsy, wherever you want it to go, it's a traffic membership. I just added a new document in the Google section and I posted about it in the community for that um, class. So it's, it's about what Google is looking for now as opposed to last year in the age of AI <laughs> because because Google's saying they want one thing and they want something else apparently. And I'm, I'm kind of enjoying it, but you know. Okay, so anyway, I think you're going to be, I think you're going to have, you're, you'll be safe to have some POD stuff in your shop as long as you're not violating trademarks and that kind of thing. Um, and I, you know, I wouldn't worry about it too much, but I also would not just sell on Etsy and leave it as the only place that you sell. Okay. All right. Next question. Uh, I opened a second Etsy shop. What's the best way to get discovered on Etsy? My listings are dialed in with all the possible tags and photos. Uh, that's all, you know, I mean, ba basically to get, you know, discovered on Etsy by customers, you have to have good SEO because that's the first step. You need to have good pictures because once you start getting traffic based on people searching and then looking at your photos and liking them, they'll go to your shop. And you can also run ads if you want to do that. You can, I mean, just all the basic stuff. There's, there's no magic, there's no magic anything that's going to be a different answer. You know what I mean? So it's social media, ads, Pinterest, because I don't really consider that social media, uh, Etsy search, 
that's about it. That's how you get discovered. And you can talk about your business to people, send people there yourself, word of mouth. You know, in if you are in Facebook groups to let you promote your businesses, go there. But it's it's just either take the time to send traffic to your own shop or pay for ads. It's time versus money. And it just depends on how you want to spend your effort or your cash, you know. Um, but there's no real, I mean, that's, that's basically the answer to how do I get traffic? Okay. If you have good SEO and you have good pictures, that's it. Because once you start selling on Etsy, they will show your listings more and you will keep getting sales basically until they change the algorithm and something weird happens. All right. Next question. I had a potential customer contact me that they're having difficulty with ordering a personalized item. What's the best way to direct them? I indicated that they could message me for the information to be included but do I have any way to see if there's an actual problem with ordering or if the customer is just having that problem? I have heard, and this actually happened to me, that Etsy has been canceling orders. And I don't know if it's something going on with the payment system, um, but it, just in the last few days, people have said that they've had customers saying, I, I keep getting my orders canceled. Okay, you can't do anything about that because Etsy controls the payments on Etsy. We don't get that information. They're never going to tell us what happened. They're never going to tell us if it's a glitch or if it's actually something with the customer's payment method that's wrong. We don't know. But if they can eventually place an order and they just can't send you the personalization, that could be another glitch on top of the payment glitch. And they can just send you the stuff, uh, the information in a message. That's fine. But, you know, don't send people stuff unless their payment goes through. All right. Because, you know, a lot of times you'll say, oh, well, this, this thing got canceled. This payment got canceled. And I don't, I, I'm just going to, you know, don't, don't send it. People are very, I'm trying to think of another nice word. People are very eager to get any order. If you haven't gotten orders or your, your, your orders are very slow, it's hard to see an order come in and get canceled, but it would be harder to send the thing and then not get paid. And it's not, don't take the payment off of Etsy, let Etsy handle it. Because if Etsy cancels an order, it's generally because there's a problem with the payment method. Either it's a stolen credit card or there's not enough funds in the bank or whatever the reason may be. We, we don't know that because we don't control payments, like I said. So that's all. All right. But that is happening a lot. The cancellations have been happening more frequently in the last couple of days. And I only noticed it yesterday because I went into my completed orders and there was one that was canceled. And I was like, well, that's strange, but I hadn't seen it come through anyway. Um, okay. So that's all the questions. So what do you guys want to talk about? You can post questions in the uh, chat. That's the word for it, right? Yeah. Post questions in the chat. We'll see what you guys have going on. Yeah, and, and please obey Bill. Holidays Lane is our moderator. Put question at the front because my eyes are shot. I got new glasses too. People are like, you need new glasses. I'm like, I got new ones. They were great for two days. And now my eyes are back to being as bad as they were, I think. All right. Question, does Etsy look at when the package is actually scanned? Yeah, they do. Because I just went on my star seller and it said 99% of the time your packages are sent on time with track. I was like, what the hell? Because I sent everything with tracking and um, on time, if not ahead of time. And I went into the CSV file and there were a couple of packages that said they were not sent on time. And it's because they missed a scan. And they're still, this was like from a month and a half ago. So they definitely got there. But they're still sitting on acceptance pending. So Etsy does look at that. So I would say take everything to the post office counter. Don't just dump it in the box and drive away because you don't know when they go to those boxes. And the, the guys at my post office are like, "Ah, eh, we empty those boxes and we don't even scan anything. We just send it to the hub. And it might not get scanned at the hub either. So you definitely do want to have them, have them um, scan things in. But yes, Etsy does look at that. Okay, and don't print your labels ahead of time. I'm reading the second part of your questions. Don't print your labels ahead of time. Um, yeah, don't do it because they, they are looking to see when they're scanned in. Okay, basically Botanical says, is it better to message customers with updating throughout the journey? Oh, no, 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 don't do that. It's so annoying. Um, just let Etsy send them the, the messages because there's no reason to duplicate that. It's so annoying. I have bought something 
and uh, on Etsy, and they just send you so many stupid messages. It's so annoying. And so, and, you know, if I if I got the same thing from the seller, I'd be like, why, why, why do I need this? Is duplication? I don't need this. So no, don't do that. And yes, I have cleaned my glasses. I clean them every day. It doesn't help. It doesn't help. It's my eyes. It's that I look at the computer too much, basically. You know, it's, it, that's just how that goes. So I know what's wrong with me. It's not my glasses. I can't blame the equipment in this case. All right. What else? Um. Yeah, and Nia Jewelry says, not always possible to go to the post office, but I do choose the next day on the shipped on date. Yes, I do that too. I print the labels maybe on a Sunday, but I'll say Monday is the shipping date. And then they're actually shipped on the day that it says they are. So anyway. Um, question. I have a customer telling me her package never arrived in December. <laughs> okay. How do I... Uh, Oh, I think that it just, it just skipped. Okay. Um, how do I nicely tell her it shouldn't take her over three months to realize her package never came. She wants a refund. Is it a hundred days? Because if it's a hundred days, then she can't get a refund. I mean, if it's, if it's like right at that hundred day mark, then she can file a claim with Etsy. And, and if it went with tracking, then they'll pay for it. Um, but I would just write back to her and say, you know, it, look at the dates, first of all. And if it is possible that she could file a, a purchase protection claim, just tell her that information and let her go from there. You don't need to say anything. I mean, honestly, in December, she might have been getting a lot of packages and just never realized that she didn't get the one that she bought from you. That's that's I don't know anyone else who would do that. You know, honestly, I get packages and I toss them in the corner until I have time to open them. I don't care. I, I don't like open everything and check it the minute that I get it. So it could be a couple of weeks. I wouldn't wait three months, you know, but it, it could be a while between the time that I receive the package when I open it sometimes. And in December, like I said, she might have been getting a lot of packages in the mail for Christmas. So who knows? But to, if it's within that 100 days, she can file a purchase protection claim. If it's after 100 days, then all bets are off. She can't put her, she can't do a review. She can't file for a, re, a refund. And there's no reason if it said it was delivered, then there's no reason that you should have to refund that. Um, and she knows that if it's December, she knows that, you know, if it's within 100 days and she's lucky, basically, and she knows that. So. Anyway. All right. Question. How far ahead of the session uh, of the season do you do you recommend to list seasonal items? I, I just leave seasonal items up all year because people do buy seasonal things throughout the year. It's weird. I think like last year I got some Mother's Day orders the week after Mother's Day. That was very specific. I get things for Christmas during the summer. You know, I mean, things sell all year. I, I got an order today for some autumn leaves. It's not autumn now, you know? So it just depends on what people are doing and what they want to buy it for. And I just leave things up all the time. If you're going to list things up, you know, if you're going to put things up just seasonally, do it four months ahead because that's how long the listing lasts, you know? So if it's, a, if it's for Christmas, do it four months before Christmas because that's when people will stop buying um, but anyway, yeah, I just leave things up. Okay. Boldface Truth says it's about 97 days. I just didn't know how to respond. Tell her she has 48 hours to send you a message through the order form. If that's how she did it, then that works. Cause in 48 hours, she'll be able to file a claim. But if she waits until a hundred days, then it's not going to work. Okay. All right. Let's see. Packages in the corner. Yes. And then when I can't find what I thought I ordered, I get a second one. Yeah. I'm not that bad. I don't think, but yeah. Or you go to put it in someplace safe and then you never see it again. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys are saying that you sell seasonal stuff. Yeah. I just, I just leave, I just leave seasonal stuff up. I don't take it down. Okay. Are there any other questions? Everyone's very quiet today. Very quiet. I don't know what's been going on all of every time I go into one of my lives, because I do lives for my, my Pinterest class and this. And then on Wednesday, I do the monthly membership. And on Friday, I do the eShop group. 
the last week I've gone in and everyone's been very quiet and I always set it up so that it starts five minutes ahead of time and people can come in and kind of chat with each other. But everyone's been very quiet and that makes me really nervous. I don't know why. Like everyone's just sitting there waiting. I'm like, talk to each other. Although I, I did come in on a weird conversation about Bigfoot during one of them. Anyway, I sometimes I'll come in like halfway through the conversation. And I'm like, what the hell are you guys talking about? Because I just, I can't figure it out. Just avoiding doing taxes. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about everyone else. I've been super busy and I'm multitasking. Oh, nah, that could be. I I have not been super busy. I have been divesting. See, this is my my year to divest. I'm getting rid of things that I don't need to do. But I find that I'm getting rid of things I don't want to do <laughs> as opposed to need to do. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about I don't know about Bigfoot. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, if you guys don't have any other questions, we could just wrap it up. We could stop talking right now because there's no reason to, to hang out. And, uh, you know, apparently Jan is trying not to do her taxes. Wendy is, you know, multitasking. Basically, botanicals is Swedish death cleaning. SEO research. I am doing another keyword list, which is more difficult than I thought it was going to be. And I'm I'm in the middle of doing that. So I had to stop to come over here. Um, but I'm doing a keyword list for Western wall art. And it's maybe Bigfoot would fit in there. I could do that. Um, but yeah, it's 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 very anytime you get a keyword that's that specific, you know, it it's harder to get keywords around that with that phrase in it. So I've kind of had to branch out. I've branched out into other things, but there are some weird Western themed rooms in houses, apparently. So I'm including some of that. Okay, question. Well, in clarification on not printing labels ahead. I asked because like this week I had a couple orders that I wanted the shipping to be deducted in Monday pay. So I marked the order for Tuesday. Is that okay? I mean, you can, you can do it whenever, um, whenever you want. Like I I'll print, like I said, I print labels on Saturday and Sunday because if I don't, they just stack up. Right. So I just, I don't like seeing things in the queue that have to be done. So I just get rid of them. So I'll print them on Sunday, but I put on the label, the shipping date is Monday. And that way, when I take them to the post office, it's the correct date and it has the correct transit time for the customer. So I, that's how I do it. And you you can push it off if you want, but then I don't think you can take it to the post office and ship it until the date that it has it. So, you know, I you can you can do whatever date you want on it. Um but don't don't push it off so that you're shipping things late and don't take things to the post office too soon, basically. OK. Um, ah, playing plumber. It's a crappy task. And I see you have a the emoji of the crap truck. Very good. OK, question. Do you think the image of Bigfoot is copyrighted? Probably. I, I think that belongs to someone that the you know, the or Bigfoot walking past, you know, the guy in the ape suit. Um, I think that is probably copyrighted. I wouldn't use it. Okay, question. Well, let's see, ever get a hand on these scammers? Still getting messages. It, wait, I at least know better, but new shops don't. Well, you know, they did, they announced that they were going to be stopping messaging. Like they stopped people being able to message each other without actually going to the shop. And that slowed them down. That 100% slowed them down because... I see I see something else happening on my end that I know it's a bunch of scammers and it that stopped. But now it's starting to pick up again. So I think it just, you know, you have to stay one step ahead of scammers and it's hard to do because they are scammers and scammers are going to figure out ways to scam things. And it's not just on Etsy. They're everywhere. Scammers are everywhere. They're on I mean, you guys get the messages on Facebook that your account's going to be disabled. You know, and it's a little purple picture. It's a little stick man picture. It's so stupid. Um, but yeah, that's, there you go. So anyway, um, 
Now, AJ, is are you saying that that picture of Bigfoot is not? Well, okay, now look, according to Google, you can't trust Google these days because there's so much junk in the SERPs. You can't, you can't trust it. So make sure that you're checking two or three sources that are actually official and not the Google automatically generated response because that's just scraping bad information and putting a bad answer together. So don't, don't rely on Google for your answers to copyright questions. Go to the U.S. Copyright Office and try and check there. Okay, I'm just saying because that's a bad, don't rely on Google for anything these days because they're having a lot of problems with AI scraping the wrong information and just spitting out nonsense. Um, so if you're talking about copyright, then I would, I would check, I would check somewhere else. Don't just check on Google. Um, anyway, back to the scammers. They're everywhere. And you can't keep, you can't get a hold of them. You can't keep it one step ahead. It's whack-a-mole. Okay. Question. What is the payment cycle for Etsy? Is it Monday through Sunday? I think if you're paid weekly, I think they, they factor in everything on Monday, but there's a certain time difference. Like, I don't know, you'd have to go and look, look in the finances and it will probably have a breakdown there or in the help section, there's probably something about the payment cycle. I'm not sure hundred percent. Um, you can set up different payment schedules so that you're paid, but if you're asking like what days are included, I would think that there would be some kind of a gap in between the last day of the payments and the days that you are paid. There's got to be some kind of a delay. So I'm not sure what that is. Um, okay. Da, 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 da. Question. I think I'm, I don't think that I'm skipping anything, but if I did just repost your question. Okay. What's going on with messages in regard to responding? I'll have responded to a buyer and I'll get a reminder to, <laughs> yeah, to respond the next day, but I already did. It's just Etsy is really glitchy right now. And they did something, they were throwing spam, they're throwing like regular messages into the spam folder. So that's something else you guys might want to do. You might want to check your spam folder occasionally to see, just like once a day, go and look at your spam folder to see if there's anything in there. There's an actual real message because a lot of things are not, working the way that they're supposed to work. And that usually happens when they're in there messing around with things and somebody presses the wrong button. You know, it's, it's very technical. Um, anyway. Okay. Question. If a customer buys an item and wants to return because it's smaller than they thought, yeah, it's always the size um, because they didn't read the description. Does a seller still have to refund? It keeps happening. Okay. First of all, if it keeps happening, you need to have better pictures like right up at the front, like the second, it wouldn't be the first picture, but the second picture, put it right next to a ruler, put it like in words, it is two inches wide or whatever it is. Okay. Um, put something next to it for scale, but a ruler is best because that'll show exactly how it is. If it keeps happening, it, it might not be that though, because I mentioned at the beginning, Etsy is just attracting these customers who are obviously not reading anything is very strange. Um, you, you can take a refund, but they have to pay for the postage back and they don't get their original postage refunded because that's an error on their part. If there's nothing wrong with the product, I tell people you can send it back as long as it's unopened and unused. And that's, you know, you have to pay for the postage and I will refund it minus the original cost of shipping when it gets back to me in usable condition. And you have to put all those, don't just say, yeah, send it back. When you get it back, that's when you refund it. Don't refund it before that. They have to pay for the shipping. They have to get it back to you in good condition. And if it's broken when you get it back, then they don't get a refund, you know. But it, as long as you're not paying for the shipping and you don't refund that, then you're not going to be out any money. It's just irritating to have to take a refund. But you can always resell the thing if it's in good condition. If that's the only reason that they have, then that's kind of a, that's, that's on them. That's their, that's their mistake. If it's your mistake, you should refund it. But if it's their mistake, then they can, you know, I, I tell people, sure, as long as you haven't opened the package and if it gets back to me and it's obviously been opened, I don't refund it because that's, you know, that's not what I said anyway. Okay. Question. Do you think it's a good idea to, uh, wait, to delete your replies and the reviews to make the review look cleaner, but the review is still locked in? What? No. Why? No, no. Okay. I, and I, the last question is, or the last sentence is someone suggested that in one of the Facebook groups. No, you want people to actually see that you are paying attention and that's, that's, you lock in the review. Yeah. That's one reason to respond. 
but it also shows that you're paying attention to your shop and that you are actually interacting with customers and that you are reading the reviews. It's not just to lock in the, the review and to make them look cleaner, that's stupid. So no, the answer to that is that's dumb, no, okay? Um, just answer thank you and move on, but you wanna have your picture up there. You want people to see that you're actually paying attention and that it's you, because you know, otherwise it just looks like the reviews are there and you haven't done anything and you're not paying it and you don't care. You know, thank people for the review. And that's nice. It's, you know, they took the time to leave it. You want people to see that you're paying attention. All right. Um, okay, question. Do you know how I can find the status of a copyright infringement I reported on Pinterest? No. Okay, the listing is no longer visible, but I'm unsure if the user removed it or Pinterest did. I'm sure that Pinterest probably did. I, they don't always let you know the status of that. So if the thing is gone, then they took care of it. Uh, but there's no, they don't always tell you because that's not their job to do that. And they, they don't let you know. I think if they don't remove it, they will let you know, maybe, but if you filed it, the listing is gone. That's all you need to worry about. So good for you. Good for you for getting that taken down. All right. Uh, question. Do you know how I can find the status of a copyright infringement? Oh, that's the same one I just read. Oh my God. Okay. Why, why is YouTube doing this to me? Question, after rebranding, is it better to leave the old hideous, the old hideous pin pictures on Pinterest or can I slowly remove them and pretend they didn't exist? I would leave them unless they have gotten zero, zero, zero stats across the board, like no interaction at all, then get rid of them. But sometimes the ugliest pins are the ones that get the most attention. And I was just looking, there was some, there's a Facebook group, or uh, I think it was a Facebook group where people were complaining that their ugliest pins are the ones that get the most repins. And they're like, I spent all this time to make nice looking pins. And then the ugly ones are the ones that, you know, so who knows? I, I wouldn't take anything down if it's actually getting activity and it still leads to a link that works. If it's got nothing no one's ever clicked it. No one's ever saved it. It's got no impressions or very low impressions. And it's old, then get rid of it. Sure. But uh, yeah, you can leave the old ones up. It doesn't matter. And it's also less work for you to have to go, go through your Pinterest account. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, Nia Jory is disagreeing with me. I usually agree with you, Kara, but on this one, I disagree. The thank you, thank you, thank you are visually really dragging as a customer when I see it in other shops. Just saying, I don't care. You do what you're going to do, but, you know, I don't care. I would rather have people see that I'm the one who's paying attention to it because visually dragging is not a thing for me. You know, I would rather have people see, and especially now the way that... Um, now, you know what? I'll talk about that on Wednesday. I was going to talk about this on Wednesday during my uh, monthly membership thing. Yeah, I'll talk about that then. I disagree. And that's all. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the bad neighbor decal says mine should get a ton of interactions in because they're really bad and are they're really bad or they're really ugly. I can't read because YouTube's putting that thing. Yeah, sometimes the ugliest pins get a lot of traction. I don't know why. Maybe it's because they're ugly and people are like, what is this? And then they click on it. I don't know. Okay. Question. Any suggestions for how to keep track of messages that need follow-up? No, you just have to keep track of it. I don't, I don't keep, tra I mean, they, they will send you another one. Um, I don't, I don't answer messages unless I can do it right that moment. And then if they need follow-up, I just get it done. I, I don't, I mean, I don't know what kind of messages you're getting that you're going to have to go back and forth that much, but there's no way on Etsy that you can do that. So I have no suggestions on that. Sorry. Um, now, okay, basically Botanical says, here's how to require them to fill in a field. On the listing configuration page, look for personalization and turn it on. There are four items to configure. One is personalization is optional. Uncheck it. Yeah, that's true. I thought, yeah, I thought personalization had to be required, but maybe not. Um, yeah, make personalization required and then they have to fill it out. 
Okay, question. When when is the live for the twelve dollar a month sub? That's on Wednesdays at noon, and that's over on the Teachable platform. Um, I do that through. We do it on Zoom, but I post everything on Teachable, so all of that is over on Teachable. Okay. Anything else? It's two fifty. Give this video a thumbs up while we're waiting for more questions. I will do the same thing. And if anyone else has a question, just ask it now. And if not, we can just wrap it up and we can all go do our taxes. If you haven't done your taxes, go do your taxes. Go do your taxes. Um, I don't see any more questions coming up. And I know that YouTube gives me a little delay, so I will... I'll, I'll hang out for 10 seconds, but if not, oh, there, okay, see, there it goes. Okay, question, is anyone else having issues creating listings on their phone? Uh, I don't do that usually, so I can't answer, but maybe someone else does pictures in particular. I don't know. I mean, Etsy's been so glitchy lately, and I think somebody was just saying that they were having trouble uploading pictures, so it might have been on their phone. I don't know that they specified uh, somebody was saying they're having trouble with variations. I'm trying to remember because I see all this stuff kind of in passing in the Facebook group and it's not always, people don't always give a lot of details, but people have been saying that they've been having trouble creating listings. So possibly it's possible. And Phyllis says, when will Go Imagine go international? I doubt, I don't have any information about that because it's not my company. They don't have, I do know that they don't have any plans to go international anytime soon. It's too complicated. It's just too complicated. And you want to, if you're building a business, you want to make sure that the business is solid before you start doing things that are really complicated that you don't have to do, basically. So I wouldn't blame them for never going international because I, I think about just paying sales tax would be a nightmare. You know, that's a that's a disaster trying to keep track of that. But I, I don't think that they have any plans for that right now. Um, but anyway, I, I don't know. You could ask over in their Facebook group, but I don't think that they have any kind of plans for that. Sorry. OK, question. How long does it usually take for a new listing to start showing up in search? Ten minutes. A new listing can show up in search in about five to 10 minutes because Etsy is pretty fast at indexing things. It doesn't mean that you're going to show up in search. It, it means that it is available to be found, right? So, um, you know, there are, there are all kinds of things that... I, I've done videos about Etsy search before. You you list something. The first thing they do is they go and they look at the keywords to find the first, the best, most relevant thousand listings that they can find for whatever that person happened to type in. So if I go in and type, you know, purple people eater t-shirt with fringe, they're going to look through all the t-shirts. I don't think they'll find one of those. But they're going to find the things, the 1,000 that they think are the most relevant based on what I typed into search. And then after that, they rank them. Okay, so you want to get into that first sweep of a thousand listings, because if you're not, you're not going to get ranked. And if you don't get ranked, then you don't even have a chance to be on the first page. You have no chance. And people don't shop past the first page very much. They've said that, you know, it's a very high percentage, like 80 plus percent of purchases are at the top of the first page, you know, um, it's it's very high. So you want to be on the first page of search for whatever happens to be typed in. And the way that Etsy is ranking things now, it's not just based on keywords. Keywords are still important regardless of what anyone says, because this is some of the, yeah, I've seen some weird stuff about that recently. People say keywords aren't important. Like, yeah, they kind of are. If you listed something on Etsy with no keywords, it wouldn't know what it is. It just wouldn't. Um, but you, you get ranked based not on just the keywords, but on the sales history, on your shop listing quality score, your shop quality score overall. Um, if, you know, do you have free shipping is, cause that's a piece of it. Is there a video in the listing? That's a piece of it. It's probably a very small piece, but there's all kinds of different things that go into it. 
And I'm seeing some very distinctive patterns in listing results that we have no control over whatsoever. And that's the ranking part of it. But we do have control over the keywords. So don't let anyone tell you the keywords aren't important. It, it, they still are the most important piece of it because if you don't get into that first sweep of a thousand listings, you're not going to get ranked at all. So, yeah. Uh, but you get found on Etsy pretty quickly. Anyway, uh, I think, it, 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 uh, question, I'm about to take a trip. Do you think vacation mode is safe to use for a few days without throwing off your shop's groove? Yeah, a few days is no problem at all. I was gone for 10 days in October of last year, and it did slow my, my traffic down a little bit when I came back. But it's it's hard to, for me to say that because that's the time of year that everything slows down for me anyway. But it, if you're gone for like a week or more, it can slow you down. If you're gone for a few days, it's not going to make a difference. So I'm, I wouldn't be afraid to turn it off for a few days. Okay, question. I sell vintage, but I've been adding jewelry a jewelry line that will affect my shop or should I open a dedicated jewelry store? It's not going to affect your, that, that should be okay. If it's going to confuse your customers, like, are they going to think all that jewelry is vintage? Then I would open a second shop. But if, if it's something that makes sense to sell together, then it's okay. I, I don't know that, you know, if you're selling like vintage candlesticks and then you have handmade jewelry, that might be a little too much. So, you know, two shops are for the customer's sake, Yes, but it's not going to confuse Etsy because Etsy doesn't care. They're looking at individual listings more than anything else. Um, okay, question. If you send a link to someone and they buy the item, they're not using search or keywords. How does this affect the quality score or the stats since they are not keywords? It just goes under direct traffic and it shows that they went to the listing and they bought it. So that's good. That's all. It doesn't necessarily, it's not related to a keyword, but it, it's it still is a sale. Okay. And how many searches, views, or favorites do you think it takes to get, a, to see a keyword in stats? That I don't know. They, they don't show things. Um, they don't show individual, like if there's three keywords, they're not going to show that because you might be able to figure out which one of the customers, if one of them bought it, you might be able to figure out what they searched with. And I don't know why it matters. But Etsy has always kind of cloaked that information until they get enough to make that information anonymous. I don't know what the cutoffs are, though. Okay, one last question. Etsy seems uh, quiet at the moment. Any ideas why that might be? Uh, for some people, it's quiet. For some people, it's very busy. And for some people, it's like up and down, up and down. And I'm one of the people that's up and down. I don't know. It's like it's real busy one day and then pretty quiet the next and real busy the next day. I, it, there's no explaining it. It could be them messing with the algorithm. It could be people are on vacation this week because it's spring break in a lot of places. It, it could be that people are spending money on groceries and they don't have money to spend on other stuff. There's a lot of things that it could be, and there's no one definitive answer that I can give you. It just is what it is. Um, could you please do a teachable video to set it up? To set up what, Anna? To set up what? I'm not sure what you're talking about. And after I get that answer, we can call it. So please give this video a thumbs up. It does help the YouTube algorithm. I'm going to do my Spaghetti Juice podcast right after this. So watch for that on Thursday. And I'm still waiting for Anna to answer the question. I don't know. Tiff says, I'm having less visits, but more sales. Yeah, I mean, my sales are down year over year, but I'm still selling just as much. So that means the conversion rate is higher, you know. It's, so it's not a bad thing. It doesn't matter. The only, the only number that really matters to me is revenue. Because if I have one person show up at my shop and buy $10,000 worth of stuff in one day, I'm happy with that, right? I don't care. I don't need 90,000 customers. I just look at the revenue. That's all I want. That's all I want to know about. Yeah, people people have suggested that they're they are targeting keywords better. I I don't necessarily think that that's true based on some of the results that I've seen. Um, but Etsy they are trying to get rid of listings that are lower quality and not even show them in search results. 
so it could just be that they're showing things that are better quality and that we as a group are selling things that are better quality, I would hope. So maybe we have a little bit more visibility and our shops are being seen a little bit more. I don't know. I, I, you know, there's no explaining it and people can sit around all day and think of reasons why it's happening, but nobody knows. No. And Etsy doesn't know. Etsy has no idea. They have more statistics than we do. They have a lot more data, but they don't know. No, nobody can ever take data and figure out every single thing. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. So yeah, get rid of all the drop shippers and Chinese shops. Well, yeah, there's a thing about them maybe opening up. Um, because I think if you're in, if you're in India, I don't think that you can open an Etsy shop now because of the payment methods, but now they're, they're talking about um, opening up Etsy payments to China or something. So we might be getting more Chinese sellers, but they would still have to go through the vetting process. And it, I would hope they're not Alibaba shops, but who knows? Who knows? And that might not even happen. I don't know. Okay, I'm just going to wrap it up. I didn't get a response from Anna, but if you want to send me a message or post, just post under this video the answer to what you want me to walk, set up because I'm not sure what you're talking about on Teachable. But I am going to end this for everyone. So thank you all. Please give this video a thumbs up. As I did mention, it helps the channel. I will see you next week. If you're in my membership, I'll see you tomorrow. And I will be talking about responding to reviews in person and leaving it there because there's a reason you should do that that I did not mention. I will talk to you guys.